Hi, Chef Pete here from Sterling Silver Premium Meats. Today we're talking flank steak. So what is the flank? So it's really not a steak when you really think about it, right? So, but it's, it's this muscle that is down in the abdomen area. Uh, it gets worked a decent amount. It's rather lean, to be honest. Um, you see a little bit of fat on the outside, but there's not much going on in the inside. A little bit of trimming, a little bit of silver skin here that you're gonna have to remove, but I mean, really little in my opinion. Uh, some people might not even take it off, but I like to. So I go on the end here and I'll just get in here and cut this. As you can see, there's a little bit down here for this connective tissue. That's just not much, right? Not, not a lot of work. I mean, uh, to be honest, a lot of places are probably just taking them and working with them as is the way they are. Turn it over, see any more? Yeah, maybe just a tad over here that I'll remove. Okay, so muscle fibers, big, long muscle fibers. So can be pretty tough piece of meat here, but not the toughest. It's not full of connective tissue that you just can't chew through, right? So it's just gonna take a little bit of what I would call love, manipulation, um, marination, lots of different things you can do. But let's just say, keeping it whole like this, what are you gonna to do to, to have a good eating experience? Well, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna marinate it. When you're gonna put it in a marinade, what are you gonna think about? You know, what, what is important in that marinade? Well, we, we don't have a lot of fat here, so adding a little bit of fat's gonna help. So we've got some oil in there. And then you can also want flavoring. So whatever seasonings you're thinking about, whether it's salt and pepper, maybe you wanna put your salt on a little later, that's up to you. Uh, chilies, um, garlic, onion, things like that, peppers. Uh, I like to marinate it sometimes in, in char peppers and get char flavors already in the marinade too, which really helps. Uh, then you wanna have some acid in there. And that acid's gonna help to, to tenderize some of the, the muscle fibers here too, right? So really, really important with that. But you, know, you can buy store-bought marinade if you want, you can make your own marinade. But I do suggest, you know, especially if you're grilling a whole like this, a marinade's always gonna be your friend. Probably anywhere from three, six, eight hours is good. Uh, if you let it go longer than that, um, you, you stand a chance of changing the texture to something that's not as enjoyable. Um, yes, it's gonna be tender, but then they can get a little bit of grainy. So it's something you need to play with. But that again, depends upon the type of marinade that you use. You, you got five pieces here, plenty to play with. So. Cooking this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you cook it probably to a medium rare, medium tops. It's gonna to get a lot tougher the more you cook it. So think about that as, you, as you're going ahead. So how's this made up? You know, we've got a little bit of a thin end here. This one tapers off a little. Remember, they're, they're a muscle from, from an animal, so they, they're generally similar, but they're not exactly the same every single time. Right? They're not cookie cutter. So you might have a thicker end and a thinner end. You might find that it's very even across. That's something that you can work with. You can pound it out a little bit. You can cut it to, to get a thicker end or a thinner end. Let's just say it was really thin here and a little thicker there. You want to throw it on the grill. You can have your mediums and your medium rare all at the same time. Or you can cut it in half and you can cook one by itself. And then the other, if you want to get all medium, uh, medium rare on that or medium. Uh, so there's many different ways you can manipulate it. But again, throwing this on whole, uh, if you wanted to, you can pound it out a little bit, make it more tender. That's one way that I would use it. Another way that I would take this is gonna be stir fry. So a, a lot of Asian cookery, they're using this in uh, a lot of restaurants. Uh, so you gotta take it and you're gonna cut thin slices like this. And then they use what they call a velveting technique, which is changing the pH. So they're gonna use some baking soda, sprinkle it on. If you go on the web, you can find many, many different ways. And then they marinate it and that's what gets it even more tender, right? But if you notice, as I'm slicing this, I'm slicing it across the grain, not with the grain, across the grain. This is the same way you're gonna to wanna to slice that if you cook it, right? So then you've got these here. You can even take it, cut maybe a little bit thicker. And if we lay this out, put this in between some wax paper, maybe even some um, plastic wrap, and then you can pound it. I'm just gonna do it with my hand a little here. All right, you see that? And then basically thread that on a skewer. 
and that works really well. Put a little marinade on there, ends up being a great piece of meat. Again, there's a lot of great beefy flavor that goes with this meat. It's just not as indulgent in, as what I would call indulgent because of the, the fat not being there, but your marinades can add that indulgence back to it. So think about it that way. Another way that I like to also do this, you know, I mean, if you wanted to cut steaks, you could, you know, and, and marinate them and do them that way. I like to do it on a little bit of a, a bias like this. There's, you're also manipulating that texture a little bit because of that cut being on an angle. You're not just straight with your muscle fibers. They're on a slight angle now too, which will, will help with uh, the chew of that. Right, so you can go about it that way. Or another thing you can do is butterfly these, make them a little thinner, that helps with the tenderness too. Also will speed up your marination. Or a very popular way that this is used is, uh, you know, one dish is uh, matambre, but lots of people will stuff these, right? So you're gonna slice it open, you're gonna roll it, or stuff it and then roll it. But if you're gonna do that, what you wanna think about is, how are we gonna get this to, to cut open so if you notice here, and I'm just gonna scoot my board up a little so you can see I'm actually on another board here. You wanna run the knife, but you have to be off the board because think, think about your handle and the heel here, right? If it's, if it's on an angle, say you're up on the board, you're not gonna get an even straight cut. So you wanna be down and we're gonna cut this across a little bit at a time and just start to manipulate that See how it's starting to fold open? Do a little bit at a time. Don't try to go all at once because you're trying to keep this as even as possible. See how that's going? So once we get this spread open, you can then pound it a little bit more if you'd like to then even it out. But again, that's your, up to you. All right. Take that just a little bit further here. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move that over. So now we've got this cut open. Think about it, if you're gonna cut it open like this, really important that you cut it this way. So you want those fibers, because if you cut it in the other direction, when you go to cut it later on, it's not gonna be so good. It's gonna be tough. So let's just say you did throw some cheese in here, some spinach, uh, some roasted peppers. Uh, if you wanna throw some ham in there, whatever, season it up. Then you're gonna roll it, roll it back up, roll it, and then tie it, right? And then you cook it. But look at those fibers, look at the direction they're going, right? Again, really important because of these big, thicker fibers. So that's when you would go to cut this, you're shortening those fibers. All right, you can see that. Those pinwheels have the short fibers on them. Because if you go to eat this and they're the long fibers, it's not gonna eat as tender. So I'm gonna take a piece and I'm gonna keep it whole and I'm gonna throw it in a marinade, throw it in the grill, and then we're gonna let it rest a little bit and I'll slice it open to show you what it looks like. Okay, what do we think about again in our marinade? We need an acid. We need some fat and we need some flavor. Of course, you need some age too, which really helps with tenderness. Um, you know, this, this cut's been aged a minimum of 21 days before we send it out. So now that we've got this in the marinade, four hours, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out of the marinade. We got a very hot grill or medium, medium hot. All right. Gonna wipe a little bit of that marinade off. This is gonna be on there for a while. And we wanna cook this to about a medium rare, is what I go for. So, grill's on. We lay the meat on. Now, we're gonna leave that, and we're gonna let that cook, oh, let's say about three minutes before I turn around and, and actually change this, the, the angle of that. 
so we can get our nice hash marks on there. Plus what that does is you don't want it to be too, too charred in that one spot. So you can control that too. Now our three minutes have gone by, so now we're gonna take that, move it to a different spot on the grill, and give it a turn. So if you notice, the one end on here, which is where you're gonna find the most fat on this very lean cut, that's where you're gonna get your flare-ups the most too. All right, so that's up to you. If you wanna trim that off and get less flare-ups on the grill, that's fine. There is also that fat that's in the marinade, but I wiped that off. You can even pat it dry if you'd like, um, and, and that'll also help you to minimize those flare-ups. Now we're going to move it to a different size and flip it over. And we'll let that go. Again, this, this is probably going to take around, oh, nine, ten minutes for medium rare. So we'll let that cook another four or five minutes on that side. I will turn it again. Okay, so that flank took probably around oh 11 minutes 12 minutes on the grill to get to my medium rare rare medium rare um, you always want to pull it off before it's done and let it rest right so if it's a smaller cut you don't really necessarily need to just cover it and let it rest so long but the bigger the cut you're going to want to cover it and let it rest so i did put some foil over this just to let it rest you know just tented it now we're going to take that and move it off. And again, I mean, this, this, this isn't rocket science here. And, and I think, you know, a lot of you maybe have done this before, but maybe not. Nice, nice and uh, slow with the marinade. No, no rush on it. Three hours, four hours, up to eight hours. That's great. Take your time cooking it. Even if you want to finish it in an oven, that's great too. But letting it rest, right? We don't want to lose any of that moisture that's in there. Then you're going to take this and you're just going to slice that across the grain. Look at that. It's nice and juicy, right? We've got a beautiful medium rare on that. You know, you don't want to slice it too thick. The thinner, of course, that you slice it, the more tender it's going to be. But this is great for sandwiches. Uh, you know, if you want to do some like flatbread pizzas, salads, of course, this would be really delicious, you know, or you can just lay it out on the board and people can take it and they can snack on it. 